we celebrate this morning you are the reason we give you praise thank you for rising from the dead for us thank you Jesus. Oh, praise the lord we bless the lord this wonderful saturday morning we all gathered here in the name of the lord we went to celebrate the resurrection of our lord jesus christ from the dead therefore i want to share on a message today he is not here, he has risen. He is not here, he has risen. And we will bring some scriptures from the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Allow me to read verses 1 to 6. And God is going to bless us together. If you have your Bible, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, I'm reading verses 1 through verses 6. And I'm reading in the name of the Lord. The Bible says, After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to, the, went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. He, he appeared, or oh, his appearance was like lightning. And his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that we are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where they lay him. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. This first day of the week, 
the Sunday morning after the Passion Week is a very, very important day because it's the day that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And according to the scriptures, Mary Magdalene and another Mary were going to the tomb where they had lain Jesus Christ. And the Bible says there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord has descended from heaven. And when the angel of the Lord descended, he was like a lightning. And when he saw the women, he told them, women do not be afraid. For they feared the meeting with an angel. And he, he told them, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And who was buried. But I'm here to tell you. He has risen. From the dead. He is not in the grave. He has risen. Just as he had said. And that was very very good news to the women. That's why the angel told them. That he has gone ahead of you. To Galilee. So follow him there. And that is good news to the Christian faith. Because in the Christian faith, the greatest miracle is the miracle of resurrection of Jesus. It is the greatest miracle. In the Old Testament, the greatest miracle was the crossing of the Red Sea. Where the Red Sea was stopped and the Israelites were to pass through dry land in the midst of the sea. That was a great spectacle. That was a great manifestation of the power of God. Stopping the waters. So that the people may pass in a dry land. In the very middle of the sea. It was a great miracle. And then in the New Testament. The greatest miracle. Is the miracle of the resurrection. This is according to the words of Jesus in the book of John chapter 2. If you read first. 18 to 22. The gospel of John chapter 2. If you read first 18 through 22. Jesus had cleared the temple of money. People who were making money. Buying and selling. He prepared a whip. And he was able to throw out everybody out of the temple. Telling them. You cannot turn the house of prayer into a marketplace. And then... The Pharisees were not happy. They began to question the authority of Jesus on his action of throwing them away from the temple. They were demanding for a miraculous signs. And Jesus told them, the only miracle I can perform is that I'm going to destroy this temple. And I'm going to build it up in three days. And they were amazed. They said this temple took a lot of years to build. And you are saying that you want to destroy it and build it in three days? That is not possible. But the Bible says the temple he was referring to was his body. That he was to die and on that day he was to rise from the dead. And in verse 22... The Bible says when he had risen from the dead, the disciples were able to recall the words of Jesus and they knew the meaning of what he was saying. And therefore I want to repeat again, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead was a great miracle. It was only comparable to the, to the miracle of crossing of the Red Sea by the Israelites. So in the Old Testament, the greatest miracle was the closing of the Red Sea. And in the New Testament, the greatest miracle was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We can therefore say, Calvary stands for our victory over sin, over bondage, over the affliction of the devil. And we thank God because resurrection reassures us who at Calvary have secured for us. Resurrection 
it uh, gives us an assurance that that which Jesus secured for us at Calvary is true. We, it is a benefit that we can enjoy. And that's why the fact of the complete work of Calvary and the fact also of resurrection gives Christians and believers hope and authority in their spiritual life. I want us to look why resurrection is important to believers. Why resurrection is important to Christians. And I want to mention a few reasons. The resurrection of Jesus from the death number one means that believers are now justified. Believers are now justified. The word justification means to be put right with God. Justification or to be justified is to be put or to be made light with God. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 4, if you read verses 25, the Bible says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. So the resurrection of Jesus means that we are justified. We are made light with God. Not on the account of our good deeds. Not on the account of what we have done. But on the account of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. And his resurrection from the dead. And I say some other time. There is a difference between being justified and being acquitted as in the case of uh, in the court of law when a, a criminal is acquitted in a, a court of law the records of his wrongdoing the writings and the file is preserved in the court of the magistrate or the judge the, accus uh, the accusations are preserved but in our case when we are justified our sins are forgiven and also the hard lightings of our accusation are destroyed. They are done away with. They can no longer be referred. And that is the good thing about the resurrection of Jesus. That he rose from the dead for our justification. Number two, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead shows that Jesus defeated death. Jesus defeated death and he defeated death completely. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, if you read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him, him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, by his resurrection from the death, or from the dead, he defeated death. And therefore, Jesus had to suffer death. Just like us, who were bowed by the fear of death. Humanity has been bowed by the fear of death. Because of sin, death is always followed by hates. When people die in their sins, they go to hell. That's why death has been a terror to many people who never knew God. But because of the resurrection of Jesus, death is no longer a terror to children of God. Because death is not followed by hates. It is followed by heaven. It is followed by paradise. It is followed by going into the very presence of God. In actual fact, death for a true child of God is not a, not a terror at all. It is just like an opening 
into the very presence of God. That's why the Bible says, when we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. And we would wish if we were clothed and we were able to appear in the very presence of God. So death is no longer a terror. A true believer is not afraid of death. That does not mean we should become suicidal. That does not mean we should expose ourselves to danger. That does not mean we go into life threatening situations. That's why it's advisable for believers even today to ensure that they observe all the protocols of the Ministry of Health so that they do not necessarily expose themselves to the infection of the COVID-19. But all the same, if a believer, like the several pastors, who have been uh, infected with COVID-19, and they have gone to be with the Lord, it is not that they expose themselves to danger, maybe knowingly. Maybe it is when they were praying for, for sick people in the hospital. They contacted the disease. Maybe it is by the use of microphones. Because now people are using individual microphones. But then we used to share microphone from one person to the other. Sometimes when we are preaching, it is very, very uncomfortable to, pre to preach. Because we are breathing very hard with your mask on. Maybe in one day or the other they were exposed. But I'm here to remind you, death is no longer a terror to a child of God. If you are there and you are fearing death so much, you need to make your ways right with God. From then you will know death is only an opening and an entrance to heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 and verse 9. Jesus by his death and resurrection defeated death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 9. If you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55, it is says death is an enemy of mankind. And the last enemy to be defeated is death. And because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus, then Paul, I think to the Corinthians, is asking death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? For the power of death is seen. That, that, that comes as a result of the law. But we have victory over death, over sin, and even over the law by this, the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We know for sure, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And therefore, we have nothing to worry. Jesus took our, our, our death. He died in our place. So that through his resurrection, we should have victory over death. Every true believer has victory over death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, when believers die, it is their, just their way to exit the earth and go to be with the Lord. Number three, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means that believers are now united with Christ. We are now united with Christ. The Bible records in the book of Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 that in our baptism we die with Christ. We are buried with him and we rise with him again to newness of life. And therefore, we as believers, by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, at baptism, we die to sin and rise up to new life with Jesus. And therefore, the resurrection of Jesus means believers are now united with our Lord Jesus Christ in his resurrection, never to part again. Jesus is never dying again. And therefore, we as believers, 
we are united with Christ. We are one with Christ. When we believe in Christ to become your Lord and Savior, you become united with him, never to part again. Reason number four why resurrection is important. Resurrection of Jesus confirms the truth of scriptures. There are several scriptures in the Old Testament. Like in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, if you read verse 10 through verse 12, Isaiah was prophesying and he was prophesying 700 years before the birth of Jesus. So it was a long, long time. It was a prophetic perspective prophesying about the birth of Jesus 700 years. And he's, he, in those verses, he was talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Isaiah 53, verses 10 through 12. And also if you read the book of Psalms chapter 16, verses 10 through verses 11, it talks also about the resurrection that we do not leave him to decay or to see corruption in the grave. He was to raise him up. And therefore the scripture, the word of God has become reliable. The resurrection of Jesus enables every Christian, every believer, to rely on the truth of the Holy Scriptures. Let me tell you, you need to believe what God says in his word. His word is true. His word is reliable. When he says he is your healer, believe he will heal you. When he says you are a deliverer, know he will deliver you. When he says he breaks the chains and the yokes, know for sure your chains and yokes are broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Because scriptures are reliable. Number, number five. The resurrection of Jesus proves that the gospel is true. The gospel, the good news we preach is true. Because according to First Corinthians chapter 15, if you read verses 1 to 4, and especially verse 3 and 4, this, this is the message that Paul preached. And this is the truth of the gospel that we preach. Number one, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. This is the belief or the basis of our faith. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ, Christ was buried and that we know. That has been the discourse in the course of the week. And we also know that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So scriptures talks about the Christ dying for our sins, about his burial, and also his resurrection on the third day on the resurrection morning. So it proves the gospel to be true. And number six, the resurrection of Jesus proves that Jesus is the son of God. Resurrection is the ultimate proof that Jesus is the son of God. Romans chapter 1, if you read verse 4, the Bible says, Christ was declared to be the son of God. In power, according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead. His resurrection from the dead declared that Jesus Christ was the son of God. So today we know Jesus Christ is the son of God because of his resurrection. Number seven, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead means the Holy Spirit will be poured unto the hearts of those who, believe, who, who, who believed or those who believe in Christ. Jesus Christ had made a promise that when I go to the Father, I'm going to set the helper the spirit of truth. And because Jesus died, was buried, and on that day he rose from the dead, and he has ascended to heaven, he has sent the Holy Spirit. Therefore, every true believer should seek the promise of the infilling with the Holy Spirit. I tell you, you qualify to receive the Holy Spirit. 
You qualify to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The church cannot walk powerless after the resurrection of Jesus. The church should not walk devoid of power. The church has the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus resurrected. If you are there, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you may continue to receive the power of God. That is according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 33. Another reason which is number 8 Jesus Christ his resurrection from the death gives believers a living hope. We get a living hope. A hope that can help us. That we shall be laced even when we die. The grave is not the end. Even after we die, we shall rise up and we shall live again. So, the grave is not our lasting praise. No. We shall be raised and we shall be with the Lord forever. Christ became the first fruit of the resurrection. And therefore, believers will follow. And for that reason, number nine, resurrection of Jesus Christ means... That Christ will judge the world in righteousness. That is according to Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31. Because in the times of ignorance, God overlooked our sins. But right now, he is commanding men everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed a certain day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. It is important therefore, because the judgment today is coming, when he will judge sin... It is important for you and me who believe in the resurrection to continue to walk in the fear of the Lord and to live in holiness. And you who is not born again, it is a time to give your life, life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that when you die, you shall live again, never to be separated with God. I want to make a short prayer in the name of Jesus. And I know God is going to bless us. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this day. That we are commemorating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not in the grave. He has risen. And we thank you Lord because your grave is empty. And therefore we can believe the scriptures. We can believe you, the promises in your word. That you are our healer and our deliverer. The Bible says Jesus you are the same yesterday, today and forever. I ask you to do to my viewers and listeners. What you were able to do in the days of the Bible. You moved about healing. You moved, you moved about delivering and saving sinners. Oh God. May you save all those that are going to believe your word today. May you change and transform your life their lives and cause them to come to you. I thank you because you are going to do it for you are glorified and you are honored. In Jesus name I do pray. Amen. Tazamaji wangu na juu mabarikiwa sana kwa nino hilo. La kufa na kufuka kwa Yesu. Na kwa hivyo nina kuomba kama umeomba wabi hilo nyuma yangu umempukea Yesu ni mokoso wa maisha yako. Ningependa utafute kanisa nzuri la kiroho mahali utalelewa katika wokovu endelea kumjua Yesu na kama umetokea maeneo ya kitengela basi tukukaribisha kwenye kanisa la Worldwide Gospel Church ili uendelee kukulia wokovu na kumjua Mungu. Tuko kwenye eneo la Changombe na ukija Worldwide Gospel Church tutasaidiana katika safari yako ya imani. God bless you. God bless you. We love you very much. Oh, oh. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever is alive oh, he's alive Amen. he's alive Jesus is alive forever is alive Amen. oh he's alive Amen. he's alive Jesus is alive forever is alive Amen. oh he's alive Amen. he's alive Jesus is alive forever is alive Amen. Oh, he's alive Amen. 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 Amen
Tamtano 